Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you my high pressure sodium bulb collection. So, let's get started. This first one that I'm going to show you is my Lustra low pressure sodium 35 watt bulb. Now I only have one low pressure sodium bulb, so I'm going to put it in my high pressure sodium bulb collection. As you can see it has a bayonet base which I think is quite awesome. I really like low pressure sodium bulbs. You can see its tube in the inside there and that is its arc tube and here it is compared to a 200 watt high pressure sodium bulb on this side. As you can see there are many differences. This first high pressure sodium bulb is one of my favorites. It's my GE 1000 watt bulb. As you can see it's very large compared to this 70 watt high pressure sodium bulb. This bulb still works. It, it does cycle but I don't have a ballast for it. So there you go. This one is my Duralux 70 watt bulb. Its etch is somewhat rubbed off, but you can still see a part of it right here. It's a pretty good bulb, has a little bit of use on it. Here is a 200 watt GE. As you can see I got it for an amazing price of just $1. I do not have a ballast for this bulb. I got it brand new, but I couldn't pass it up for a dollar. Here we have a Sylvania 35 watt. This was the first high intensity discharge bulb that I ever bought. It is a very nice bulb. I have used it and it works well. Here we have a Westinghouse 100 watt instant restrike. And you'll see what instant restrike means in just a second. So here's the instant restrike. You have two arc tubes in one bulb. So if one restrikes, the other will take over so you won't have to wait. Or if you turn off the bulb and turn it back on, really fast the other arc tube will turn on so then you have no time delay here we have a really old bulb that came with a Cooper lighting fixture it has leaked and cycles but I still keep it because I think it's cool and the base wobbles a lot this one is a 35 watt designer's edge. Once again it has a box inside of a box. It's a pretty well built bulb and the bulb is actually made by Polar Lights if I said their name correctly. It's a pretty decent bulb. Here we have a Sylvania 70 watt. I use this bulb a lot. It's a very good quality bulb. This one is a GE 70 watt. I got it with my Lithonia wall pack. It's a pretty nice bulb. I really like how GE makes their high pressure sodium bulbs. They do a good job with it. Here is a Cooper Lighting 70 watt. It's the same design as the older Cooper Lighting bulb, except this one has an aluminum base. Here we have a Polar Lights 70 watt. 
It's a pretty nice bulb. Got it with one of my Designer's Edge area lights. Here is a 100 watt no name bulb. There is no name on this bulb. I got this bulb with a 100 watt wall pack on clearance at Home Depot. And there is no name on the wall pack either. Here is a Sylvania 100 watt. I got this bulb with my Bandit floodlight. It's a pretty nice bulb. Here we have an old Philips Alto bulb that is 100 watts. It has leaked and cycles. But works occasionally. Here we have another Philips Alto 100 watt bulb. As you can see, the newer versions lost their little green dimple at the top and don't have the little coating at the bottom. But still, it is a pretty decent bulb. Hope you enjoyed my high pressure sodium bulb collection. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.